Ladies and gentlemen, in this short game to come video, we're going to be talking about some benchmarks which have appeared for the new Titan. That is the Titan X based on the Pascal architecture. Now, just to clarify, the focus of this video is the performance in gaming, nothing else, because that's the main focus of this channel, uh, gaming and technology. And the second thing is, because the benchmarking has only just started, for example, they've only got 4K results at the moment. So this is like to help people who are on the fence of whether they should jump on the new Titan, or whether they should get the 1080, or whether they should stick with the GPU they've got, whatever that may be. So, with that said, a couple of websites have got early results. They would be GameStar.de, and also PC World, but once again, only a few benchmarks have been released, but it does give us an indication of what the performance of this GPU will be. Also, I'm going to be rounding up results, so if it's like 59.9, I'm going to just call it 60, because it's A, faster, and B, the 0.1 frame a second is probably not going to make the difference. So, for example, the Titan X in The Witcher 3, all of these results will be at 4K, scores 60 frames a second, while the Zotac GTX 1080 amp, I'm just going to refer to it as the Zotac from now on, it scores 50, while the standard bog standard GTX 1080 scores 44. The roles are very similar with the Rise of the Tomb Raider, 54 frames a second versus 50 versus 43. And finally, everyone's best friend in the world, Far Cry Primal, 55 frames a second, 46 frames a second, and 41 frames a second with the GTX 1080. So what this basically means is that the Titan X in most titles, the graphically demanding titles, is incapable of running 60 FPS locked, which is not surprising. I mean, I had a feeling it would be able to run on most games locked at 60, but the drivers are still pretty early. So what that means is in a month or so, there's a good possibility we should see slightly better performance maybe from the drivers as Nvidia tweak things. Secondly, this is also not including any overclocking results which they may eventually be out you might be able to get an extra 100, 150, 200 megahertz out of the core obviously based upon the silicon lottery. What this means is you're looking between 10 and 25 percent difference between the amp and the regular GTX 1080 compared to the Titan X. Now I've done a very quick bit of research in the pricing segment. So the cheapest GTX 1080, which is a superclocked variant, would be an EVGA GTX 1080. Um, and it's once again a superclocked variant, 650 US dollars. The AMP, the super duper high-end extreme edition, is 820 US dollars. Now that's pretty close, but it's still around $400 cheaper than the Titan, which is a hell of a lot of a price difference. So, do I feel that the Titan is a bad card? No, absolutely not. It's a very impressive card in terms of the performance, but do I feel it's good value for money? No, definitely not. It represents pretty poor value for money, but that's the case of most graphics cards when you start going into the upper echelons. This has been the case for some time now. Uh, since I can remember, I mean, even back in the day of the early G-Forces, or even, hell, even the Voodoos, it's like, if you go with the lower-end card, you get great value going up to the mid-range, from the mid-range to, like, the higher-end card, but from the higher-end to the, the absolute bleeding-edge card, you can often pay almost twice the price, but the performance difference is not really that massive. I mean, even hell, the Voodoo 3 2000 was a great example. Yes, there were a few differences between the 2000, the 3000, and the 3500 in terms of feature set, but just focus raw on gaming performance, the Voodoo 3 2000 would overclock like an absolute demon, and there would be almost twice the price difference between the two cards. So there's nothing really new or exciting in me telling you that, but if you've got 1200 bucks, personally, I would go with an SLI 1080, because that's an absolute ridiculous amount of performance. If you have a little more than that, then an AMP Extreme SLI setup or equivalent would be damn impressive. So, 
if you have loads of cash behind you, then by all means get the new Titan. I personally feel it's a little disappointing that we're not seeing all of these titles run at 60 FPS at 4K, but most of that is down to do uh, sorry to do with the lower clock speeds of the GPU. If it obviously had the same clock speeds as let's say the bog standard 1080, then we would certainly see those frames increase a little bit. Now, really the Titan, and I'm referring once again just to gaming usage, has always been a status symbol. It's always been the flagship. It's always had that that um, that uh, mysticism behind it of I've got a Titan, and therefore it's like that level of not just boasting, but it's the feel good factor. You know, you've got a really high end graphics card, and there's a lot of VRAM in there, which is going to obviously be helpful in certain games at higher resolution. So, the too long didn't read answer from me is would I recommend, would I suggest you buy the Titan, the new Titan? Well, if you've got around the $1,200 mark to spend, I would personally rather go with SLI um, 1080s, personally. If you don't have quite that money, if you've got, let's say, around the $800 mark, then obviously that's outside the budget of a Titan anyway, but you're certainly not going to be exactly poor off if you go with an SLI GTX 1070 setup, and obviously if you've got a lot less money, let's say you've got the 250 US dollars or equivalent, then really it's between the RX 480 and the GTX 1060, which is an entire separate um, argument in and of itself. So if you do have loads of cash behind you, or you just fancy one single GPU, which there can be some usage cases where that's um, preferable. For example, let's say that you just need a whole load of VRAM and once again you need it for the prosumer reasons or maybe you have issues with TDP, you don't have enough slots, maybe you're in a small form factor case, whatever that may be, you know, your, your reasons to your own, in which case the Titan is not going to be a bad card. The only slight chink in the armor for this GPU is the possibility we may get a faster Titan, which there are rumors of that. It's been you know swirling around the internet for some time, which is going to be HBM2 related. Whether that's going to happen or not, though, is kind of a bit of a mystery. Because one thing that's putting the big spanner in the works is not the 1080 or the 1070 or any of that stuff, but it's actually the new generation of cards, which is, of course, Volta and AMD's own Vega architecture when it's finally released. There are rumors that we should see Volta some point next year. Now, we don't know a whole bunch about Volta, but from what we've heard, it's going to be quite an improvement in architecture. You might see some improvements on, for example, asynchronous compute and the way that the GPU deals with scheduling on that. At the moment, it's still not doing it asynchronously, the Pascal architecture. So the AMD cards are able to somewhat catch up even at lower clock speeds or lower performance levels traditionally. So yeah, um, once again, I'm not ragging on the Pascal architecture or the new Titan. I'm just giving you your options. Personally, if you've only got enough money for one of the these cards, I would rather go with I'd rather see you go with an SLI GTX 1080. If you've got less money, then obviously your mileage is gonna have to vary depending on your budget and usage scenarios. But that said, take care of yourselves, guys. Bye for now.